Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 film Random Acts of Violence, and it is a Shudder exclusive. When I'm putting this review out, it is ahead of it being on Shudder. It'll come to Shudder on Thursday, August 20th. So just know that because of that, this is a no spoilers review, so you can safely watch it. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll reveal a little thematic stuff, some topical things from the film, but it doesn't ruin the events of the film at all. So, um, yeah, decide if you want to watch this or not. Hopefully it makes, uh, hopefully it just kind of adds to, um, the experience of the film, whether you choose to watch this before or after. I'm not telling you that, you know, I know exactly what you're going to like or, or not like. I'm just throwing the information out there. And like I've been saying, you know, I feel like every film in, uh, deserves to be watched by people once. That way you can, f you know, form your own opinion about it. But anyway, uh, it's a Shutter exclusive uh, directed by Jay Baruchel, which that name may sound familiar. He's done a lot of acting in the past, mainly comedic stuff. But he's all he has directed the film Goon, Last of the Enforcers, which I will say it was a pretty solid film. I think he's done a good job directing. And with this film, I think he did a solid job directing. He also, I wouldn't say stars in it because he's not the main character, but he is in it as a character that's in it a decent amount. And I kind of wish he would have cast someone else because I think maybe he's just better as a comedic actor. He does have some comedic moments in the film and that like fits with who he is, but I don't know. I just felt like someone could have been better in that actual role. I don't think he did the best in that role. And I wish he would have just stuck to the actual directing, which, like I said, was solid. He did a pretty good job with the directing. And I feel like that's kind of his, that's his future. You know, that's his present. That's his future. That's what he should stick with. Uh, it was partially written by B Baruchel, but also Jesse Shabbat, uh, who also worked on the script Goon, The Last Enforcer with him as well. Last of the Enforcers, I'm sorry. And it's based on a comic by Justin Gray and Jimmy Palmiotti. Uh, it has a $3 million budget, is what it had. Uh, it took them a while to get the financing together, actually, because uh, originally it was starting development in 2011, and then in 2015 they announced that they had finally finished all the casting and got all the financing secured. So it took quite a while to really get this thing going, unfortunately. And, um, yeah, that always sucks when you... <laughs> when you have to uh, take that long to get a film going, because I feel like it can end up really kind of breaking your spirit with the film, but, you know, they put a lot into the film. You can tell. Uh, the shoot was actually just for 20 days, and it was done in Hamilton, Ontario, so if anyone's watching it, you've been to Hamilton, Ontario, and you're like, oh, that looks familiar, but, you know, the scenery's kind of vague. It's more of like a rural-type setting, so you probably won't really, you know, recognize anything. Anyway, uh, since I'm doing no spoilers, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of the film, especially since it's not out yet on Shudder. So uh, basically it's about a comic book writer who is going on a trip uh, and ends up in the, I mean, he's kind of hitting like a bunch of places along the way to going to a convention. And while he's doing that, uh, he hits a town that's very important for the comic that he does about a serial killer who's based in real life. And so once he hits that town, people start getting killed again. The serial killer was not active, had, well, had become inactive, and then all of a sudden becomes active again. And why? You know, that's kind of the big question with it. And then also who's getting it and how and all this type of stuff. And it kind of rolls into, obviously, what's going on with the comic book writer. So that's kind of a quick synopsis. That's all I'm going to say about that. Cool concept. It is a good concept. So the colors in the beginning of this are actually really cool. They do, you know, Baruchel does a good job with the use of colors in this, especially in the beginning thing. But then it kind of goes to this weird, really clunky looking animation that they use in the film. And they use it in the beginning of the film and then they use it again in the end. I don't like the animation. It doesn't work for me. It looks awkward. It looks weird. It just doesn't work and it doesn't look good. I really think what they should have done is just done real life flashback uh, filming. Uh, just, yeah, just film real actors uh, with that stuff. I, I understand what they were going through or what they were going for with that animation to tie it, you know, into the comics. Like, good concept, but I just don't think it worked. It doesn't look good, unfortunately. There's a strong fear of kind of like uh, something that comes up to me. This is just a personal thing. 
there's kind of this play off of like a rural setting as far as you know getting a serial killer involved with a film and i feel like this gets used a lot because it's that whole thing of you're away from civilization if something goes down uh you don't feel that safe because how are you going to get to someone to get help a lot of time there's the issue of oh you know what no cell phone reception out here because it's so rural so those things are here in you know which i feel like it, it gets used a lot in these types of films these slashers so just something i thought uh they really stick with the violence and gore on this to make it kind of unsettling which is good like it feels closer to a realistic thing because they stick with the scenes and i think that's important with this especially with kind of the angle they're coming at with some discussions in the film, some dialogue in the film, it complements it for that reason. So I like that they chose to shoot it that way. And the, you know, the violence and gore scenes, like they look kind of realistic. And like I said, they get a little bit unsettling because they stick with it. So I think that was properly handled. They show a fandom that's kind of built on villains, which happens in the horror community. We all know this has been going on in the horror community for a long time case in point right here you know i have stuff from pinhead you know freddy krueger you know stuff like that uh i'm wearing a tall man from phantasm shirt you know that's commonplace but it, it kind of looks at it from a a realm of after it's moved out of the horror community of fictional villains and moves into real life villains i.e serial killers and it kind of gets to uh an issue that i you know see popping up where people you know, bring questions to me because I do listen to like true crime podcasts and people will bring a question to me when we start talking about it of who's your favorite serial killer. And I hate that question because I think it's very inappropriate and very misguiding. Um, I think with a lot of people, like they're just not thinking, they're not wording it all that well, because saying it that way indicates that you like the serial killer, that there is a fandom with the serial killer, that you admire them and that's a problem. If people are actually admiring them and viewing them as kind of like celebrities, that's pr a problem because obviously they're horrible people uh, and that type of stuff should not be given f real fandom. So there's a little bit of that discussion going on in the film through interactions with the characters. So I find that kind of interesting because that's, you know, even though this started filming some time ago and actually the script was done quite a while back, it's still topical right now, so that works. There's a reference point that the killer ends up using in this to kind of send messages that I kind of had to roll my eyes out because uh, roll my eyes at because it's pretty cliche at this point. But they do kind of twist it, and I was thankful for that because if they were going to continue going down that road, I was just going to be like, oh, so unoriginal and dumb. So I'm glad they kind of saved it with that. Uh, there's a sequence later on that ties into the beginning of the film that feels way too drawn out uh, for what it's actually trying to reveal. And what it reveals is fine, that's good and all, but you took way too long to get there. I think they needed to really shorten that particular scene down and it would have had a lot more impact. With, with When I was watching it, I was kind of like, I see that you're trying to go somewhere, let's get there a lot faster because why it takes so long is not important there's a lot that they could have cut out they could have just shortened it down and that's the thing like this film's in like an with credits and everything it's an hour and 25 minutes so it's not a long film so when you have those little stretches that feel like it's taking a long time that's not a good thing so they need to cut that down what is revealed does make an earlier conversation have a different angle to it, which was cool because it makes you kind of reflect on what's been talked about in the film and addressed. And it also takes a debate in the film and kind of flips it on its head, which is also an interesting concept as well. And that's, you know, that, that obviously that's to say if you're willing to take that context and think backwards and be like, oh, well, this makes me think differently about the beginning of it or this conversation or whatever. So... If you're willing to do that, it's worth it. I wish they would have played the villain differently. The villain in this seems very blank. Seems very blah. It's very much, they have no personality. It's just like, rando villain type is, is what it plays as. They should have added some personality because it would have made it way more menacing. 
the way they do it, it's very much like mechanical. And it just doesn't play well, in my opinion. There's a voiceover at the very end of this film that's kind of trying to make a point, but I don't think I really get the point. And I would be interested to find out if other people who watch it actually pull something out of that that's profound or interesting. I kind of saw what they were trying to say, but it seemed very whatever to me. So, I don't know, put some comments down there. Um, just didn't seem to have any real impact. So, for that reason, it kind of ends on this kind of like, meh, kind of like dies out, putter, putters out. Um, I dug the soundtrack in this. I thought that was pretty solid. Uh, and like I said, the directing was pretty well done. There are some cool camera movements with this too, especially early on in the film. They start to kind of go away from those a little bit further into the film. But um, there are some really cool camera movements, which I did appreciate keeping things interesting visually. Um, they did get into a long standing debate now about the kind of like people who do creative things. In this case, the guy who's doing a uh, comic book, a very violent comic book based in real life. Um, and what what is, is he inspiring people to be violent? Is he, is he giving people ideas of things to do? You know, this type of thing has come up a lot about books, about comics, about video games, about movies, all that stuff. Um, so it kind of like re-enters into this debate that seems to just keep coming up at least every other year or so. But I don't think it, honestly, it doesn't really, I guess it adds a little, it does add a little bit to it of its own idea. This also delves into the discussion of using serial killers' crimes as entertainment and whether that's okay or not to a degree. It kind of, it doesn't make a whole lot of a point of that, but there is a little bit of a point of that and kind of look at this side, look at this side, because there are two characters who are kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum when they're talking about it, but there's something in the end that kind of changes that particular type of discussion. Like I was saying, like there was something that happens that's revealed that changes your perception of that conversation, changes your perception of the discussion of the point. So that's good. There's a post credit scene in this, but it was 100% silent. And I don't think it was supposed to be. So I think they had a technical problem. I'm hoping it's not like that for when they actually put it up on Shutter for everyone to get their hands on. Because I, I had a screener copy. So hopefully that's just a problem with the screener copy. And not for you guys. But hopefully it wasn't intentional that they left it silent. Because it, it didn't work. If that's the case, it just seemed weird. And like it wasn't on purpose. So I don't know really what's going on there. And then something occurred to me at the end. So the main actor in this, the main character is played by Jesse Williams. And the whole time I'm like, this guy like looks familiar to me, but he had facial hair. And then I found out looking him up, I was like, oh, he only looked kind of familiar to me because of the facial hair, because he's clean shaven in the movie I know him from and really love him in The Cabin in the Woods. He was holding in the cabin in the woods, and he did an excellent job in that. I think he does a good job in Random Acts of Violence, so good on that, Jesse Williams. I'd be down to see this dude more, to be honest. Uh, and just, you know, it made me super excited because I love The Cabin in the Woods. It's one of my favorite horror films. It's actually just one of my favorite films, period, so that was cool. So, uh, goods and bads with this film. Overall, how did I personally feel about it? It's kind of a whatever film to me, to be honest, and... I was just eh about it, but that said, I know there are probably some people out there who will quite enjoy this film. Another thing about it is I wanted more kills to it. I wanted more tension build up between the people who are trying to survive and the killer. I felt like there wasn't enough of that in my opinion, so I just wanted a lot more out of it, and it felt like when it was trying to make points and when it was saying things, it was kind of like, okay... You know, it, it doesn't feel like it matters that much. So that's why I say it's kind of a whatever film for me personally. But hopefully other people really enjoy it. So I've been hemming and hawing about it. I'm like, do I give it two and a half? Do I give it two? Because there are good things, bad things. But I think for me personally, I gotta give it two stars. It just doesn't, just doesn't do a whole lot for me. Although I did point out there are some good things in there and I talked about that. So, but I, I do want to circle back to something 
on the very off chance that Jay Baruchel sees this. Jay, stick with directing. You're doing a good job at that. And writing. I mean, well, script could have been a lot better. Never mind. Stick with directing. Uh, plus, I liked you in a lot of stuff anyway, but acting-wise. But stick with the directing, man. I think that's your future. I think um, I would really like to see more stuff that you have directed. So, anyway... I don't know why I just did that, like he'll watch it, because he won't. <laughs> we all know that. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Put your comments down here when you see the film, or if you already have. Spoilers in the comments are totally good. People know that. Um, and then, yeah, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button, because it takes you literally a second. And if you like any videos, this one or any other ones that I put up, that's your best way to repay me and show your gratitude, because it really does mean a lot to me. And I'm very, very thankful whenever I see I get a new subscriber so thank you very much. Uh, if you've already subscribed or you're going to, make sure you also hit the notification bell. That way you know anytime I'm putting up a new video or doing live streaming. So yeah, but regardless, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.